Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Scott's Soldiers. It's winter and if your thoughts weren't on the December 2nd London show, I can help you out. After an absence of several years, I've made it back and I wasn't disappointed. I managed to pick up a few sets, the odd figures, and meet some interesting and incredibly generous people. None more so than James Opie, the eminence grease of Britain's soldiers. The London show is something that everyone should try to attend if they haven't already done so. It's an intimate show that gives you a chance to meet the makers, speak to dealers, and with fellow collectors who share your passion for this hobby. While the vendors are not all from the United Kingdom, you will find most, if not all, the British producers at this show. I like the show because for several hours, you can do all of this in a warm and welcoming environment. The vendors are there to sell, the show is easy to navigate, and there is a good variety of figures to see. So let's begin my London adventure. My trip to London was of sufficient time to allow me to stop at the Armory of St. James, located at number 17, Piccadilly Arcade, between Piccadilly and German Streets. This store has been here for as long as I can remember. It has always sold military-related items of high quality and uniqueness. But unknown to many who visit London, it is also a retailer of toy soldiers. Within its shelves, it carries the likes of King and Country, Britons, and Tradition of London figures and sets. All are well presented and placed at eye level. The Armoury does not attend the London show, but I believe it is still a worthwhile stop during your London excursion. I ended up buying Tradition of London set number H3 of Queen Elizabeth I and Sir Walter Raleigh, depicting the favoured Raleigh placing his cloak over a muddy puddle for the Queen to walk upon so that she did not muddy her shoes or dress him. The London show is still at the Haverstock School, which is a relatively easy trip from central London on the northern line to Chalk Farm Station. While I can't estimate the crowd, it seemed brisk and I spotted a number of under 30 year olds in attendance, which is always a positive sign. The show hadn't appeared to have changed much since my last pre-pandemic visit, though a few makers and second-hand dealers were missing. Apparently there was a rail strike, which I'm sure didn't help the travel plans for those outside Greater London trying to get to the show. Most of the makers were there, including the Britain's management team of Ken and Erica Oson and Ted Deddens, King and Country, represented by Andy Nielsen, Andrew Stevenson and his father from Replica Toy Soldiers, Little Legion, Asset, RP World Models, Thomas Gunn, Grey Goose, Fusilier Miniatures, Tommy Atkins, Maison Militaire, MKL, Loggerhead, Irish Soldiers, British Toy Soldier Company, and others. So if you collect from British makers, then this is the place to be. The majority of the figures available were gloss from the smaller, what I would call, cottage producers, and if you like what they are making, or you're into 54mm gloss, then you won't be disappointed by going to the London show. If you're wondering, the answer is yes, bring cash. While I did see a few credit card purchases with touchless readers, cash is king here. I didn't notice any nearby banks or automated teller machines, so make sure you have enough. It might even be better to pre-order if possible and pick up your purchases from the dealers at their tables the day of. Now there is a canteen of sorts at the venue where you could order food and beverages from a small menu and places to sit down and take a breather if needed. As I said earlier, one of the benefits of being at the London show is the chance to meet and talk with other people who make our hobby possible, like the Stevensons, the Osons, and of course Andy Nielsen. I had an opportunity to speak briefly to Andy and this is something that can't happen at every toy soldier show. So what did I buy? Well, first and foremost, I bought two sets from Andrew Stevenson of Replica Toy Soldiers and Models. I really like what Andrew is doing, and perhaps in North America, he is a little under the radar, so allow me to give him some exposure. 
Andrew is casting and painting figures in the style of the old William Britton's figures. I say style because these are not carbon copies. Yes, they are 54 millimeter gloss, but where older Britons were one dimensional, Andrew has made them more dynamic in different poses and would fit in beautifully with any 54 millimeter figures you already have in your collection, be they Indian, uh, 18th, 19th century, of any army. I would say that in some instances, Andrew is doing the figures Britons didn't. He also does bespoke sets, and you can buy castings if painting is your forte. Now, I bought the following from Andrew, and these are limited to 20 sets each. This is number 2193, Fort Henry Guard at Ease. I like the fact that the poses are unique to the other guardsmen I have. The painting is excellent, and they fit in very well with my other sets, and likely put my older Britons to shame. Now, this other set is number 2225. It's the Royal Canadian Rifles, 1868. This regiment served along the St. Lawrence River at nearby Fort Henry and Fort Wellington. Again, the troops are more animated than you would get with a Britain's equivalent. Now, I plan on ordering more sets from Andrew, so stay tuned. Andrew also had these Christmas sets and ornaments for your tree. And I really urge you to check out his website in the description paragraph and see for yourself the range and diversity of figures that he has now and the ones that he's probably planning to do in the future. I did wander over to the William Britton's table where I chatted with Erica Osen about our shared experience at the Toronto OMSS On Parade show June of this year. Now at the On Parade show, I had purchased the recent RCMP figures that Britons did to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the force. In talking with Erica, she spoke of the upcoming figure of British General Brock, who played a prominent part in the defense of Canada during the War of 1812. She also mentioned to me that Britons was planning on another RCMP figure in 2024, a mounted trooper with lance, I'm assuming something along the lines of what you would see at the musical ride. Interestingly, Britain's was introducing a new concept in its product line, 3D printed World War II Sherman tank, which the collector can easily assemble and paint. Also represented were assorted items that could be placed on the tank to dress it up. Um, think of whatever they would put on a, on a tank, as well as there were some extremely detailed figures for the tank that you can add to that set. I think this would appeal to hobbyists that like to customize their armor. While I don't know the price, I suspect it would be at a lower price point than an equivalent metal or resin tank already painted. And I've commented before that metal or resin tanks currently available are expensive. Let's not kid ourselves. And this is in large part due to the cost of assembling, painting, and ultimately shipping. So Britons may be onto something here. Britons also had a very good selection of their current inventory, including World War II German 88mm guns with crews in both a North African and European theater paint schemes. As everyone knows, I'm a sucker for Governor General Horse Guards. Just check out my episode number 54. So when I ran into Harry Kemp at his table and we were discussing his Britain's B-series Paris office figures, he pulled out these two troopers and at the family pricing rate, I bought them. He's a pal of Andy Morant who gave him the inside scoop that I collect these figures. I'm starting to feel that there are no secrets in this hobby. I've bought from Fusilier Miniatures Tommy Atkins in the past, and the websites don't do their figures justice. So take a look at these pictures as we go along. When you see them in person, you really understand why I collect them. As you can see from these additional photos, there are a lot of choices that can be made when shopping at the show. Often it's not what to buy, but 
what will fill gaps in your collection or add more variety or possibly even take you on a whole different direction as you move from English Civil War to Crimea or late 19th century conflicts. I think that this is one of the differences between London and, say, the Chicago show I attended in 2022. There are more makers and, as such, more range of themes to collect on. James Opie is a regular fixture at this show. He is a longtime British Model Soldier Society member and toy soldier collector. He mans the British Model Soldier Society table and offers free assessments of figures, and I've seen him over the years chatting with all sorts of collectors as I pass by his table. As many of you know, James is the eminence grease of William Britton's figures and has written and lectured on many occasions about this hobby and the soldiers of William Britton's. During this trip, he invited me to visit him at his house where we toured his incredible collection, and that's an understatement. And I got a chance to see some of his special and unique items and listen to him talk about his collection. I mean, he is truly passionate and extremely informed about what he has. And we sat at his kitchen table later with Ken and Erica Osen and Ted Deddens of William Britton's, discussing everything from the new Napoleon movie, social media, to where the hobby might be headed. It was a real fitting in to my London trip and an evening I'm not likely to ever forget. So I hope you enjoyed this look at the London show. As I said earlier, it is something you should try to attend, particularly if you collect 54mm gloss and like the figures produced by the British manufacturers. As I've stated repeatedly, and of course this is only my opinion, the London show is a must visit for all collectors. While its strength will always be the core UK makers and vendors, London is also a great city to visit. The show replicates itself several times a year, so for those outside the UK, a little flexibility in your travel plans would allow you to see figures like these, or previously loved ones, or those no longer in production. As I said earlier, it's something you should try to attend, particularly if you collect 54mm gloss and like the figures produced by the local British manufacturers. That doesn't mean that you can't find castings or figures larger than 1 32nd scale or even smaller. No, those are here, and as you can see, they also have a place of their own in the show. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons on your way out as this helps the channel and hopefully the hobby grow. Thank you and until next time, keep collecting. Well that's it for another episode of Scott Soldiers. I hope you enjoyed this toy soldier shopping over the Christmas season in London. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.